another MacBook Pro upgrade? That's right, but this one's going to be special. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be upgrading this MacBook Pro here, 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. And like the intro said, this one's going to be a little bit special. And it's so special, this is going to be a two-parter. So we're going to be working on this MacBook Pro for a little bit today, and then we're going to come back in the next video and get it a little bit farther. So this MacBook Pro 2012 13-inch is one we featured in a video a couple videos ago where I talked about finding and what to look for on uh, MacBooks if you're going to buy one used. So this is the one I was talking about. And this is the one that I said that I was so surprised at how clean it was when I got it and how good a shape it was that I wanted to record a, a video of what to look for and, and uh, what not to look for. So I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But let's go ahead and see what this one's starting with and talk about our plan of what we're going to do to upgrade it. So we can see we are starting here with a mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro, 2.5 gigahertz Intel i5, only 4 gigs of RAM, so obviously that's going to be something that needs to be uh, upgraded. And as far as storage, this still has the original 500 gigabyte SATA drive, so we're going to upgrade that to an SSD. Kind of standard for what you want to do with these. Um, this particular model happens to be the last model that you could easily upgrade those both the RAM and the hard drive on. So after the 2012 mid, they had the 2012 late, which was the Retina model. And from that point on, no more upgrading the RAM. So I was looking for one of these and happened to find this one, happened to be the, the perfect specimen for what I wanted to do. So let's talk about what parts we got and what we're going to do to it. So if you watched the video the other day where I uh, first found this one, you'll know that I'm not worried at all about the battery. So this battery still has some life in it. So I'm going to let it roll with that battery. So we're good to go on that. But like I said, we do need to get that memory upgraded. So I got a kit here, 16 gigabyte DDR3, uh, 1600 megahertz. So this is going to get this thing maxed out to 16 gigs. And then of course we need a 2.5 inch SSD. So again, another quick and easy swap in this uh, particular model. I went with the uh, Silicon Power because it was on sale. I get these at, at Amazon. I've used a lot of their products, never had a problem with it. I've used both their, their SSDs and their uh, RAM and never had a problem with it. The price was right, so we're going to roll with that. So to get this done, we need to have the right tools. So I'm going to use my trusty Strabetto toolkit, and I've got a Phillips double zero tip on here to open up the case and then a T6 Torx T6 to work on that hard drive. So let's power this thing down, open it up and get the parts in there. All right, so we got it shut all the way down, flipped it over, took all the screws out, got the screws in the little magnetic keeper here. Remember on these models, the three uh, odd sized ones, the three long screws go in these three back right ones by the hinge. So we'll set that aside. Now, I had suspected that this had never been opened. And based on the uh, the bite that some of the, you know, these, these screws have this little blue Loctite stuff on them from the factory, still had a little bit of bite on that. So I think they've never, never been cracked open. It almost sounded like uh, opening up a brand new textbook when I crack some of them open. So let's go ahead and pull the lid off, see if it's in, as clean inside as what I'm expecting and hoping and yeah it's not too bad so before we do anything else I'm gonna grab my spudger here before we go poking around in here and we're gonna take this battery connector off just so we don't accidentally drop a screw on, on here anywhere and, and short something out so just a little little quick pry on him and then bend him away from the connector a little bit and now this battery's disconnected we're not going to do anything with the battery, but uh, it's it's now disconnected and safe. All right, so like I said, pretty standard upgrade for this guy, and we always do the RAM first. So let's let's be crazy and do the hard drive first on this one. So on the hard drive, we're going to take out these two screws here, and that's going to lift up a tiny little bracket, 
and let us take this hard drive out. So if you've watched the channel before, you know I like to try to take these all the way up, but keep them captive inside the black bracket. Just to have one less thing to worry about. And then we take it out, keep the screws in there, and lay that to the side. Now remember when you lift up on this little tab here that lets you lift this thing out, to not lift it very far because this connector right here that's holding, that's attached to the hard drive, has a very short ribbon cable. So we're just going to lift it up a tiny bit, get a nice solid grip on it, then wiggle this connector off and lay him back in there. So we're done with this. We can take the plastic tab off if we want to put it on the new one, but then we have to take these four uh, little studs here. So four studs, that uses the T6 drive to take that off. So I'm going to take those off, put them on the new hard drive, and then I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I've taken the four studs out of the old drive, put them on the new drive, and to put this back in here, remember there's two little mounting holes right here that we're gonna lay this in at an angle, pop those in there, and then when we lay it down, the other studs are gonna put, it's gonna rest inside those orange spacers there, and before we lay it all the way down, we're gonna hook the cable up, again, remembering not to stretch it too far away from the, the case itself. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up. Stick it in the little mount. And now we're ready to put that top mount back down. And putting the Phillips drive back on. We're going to send this down in here. All right, so that's done. So next step is going to be the, the memory. All right, so to change out the RAM, we're going to take the old RAM out first. So we've got two ears on either side here that keep, keep these in place. So we're going to spread those ears apart. It's going to spring up, take them straight out, and actually got a bonus. The second one came up. Sometimes the second one will stay underneath there, and you'll have to spread them apart again to get it to pop up. But they both popped at the same time, so that's good. So now it's empty. We're going to take the new RAM, and if you look, the contact has a, a key to offset here. So we're going to line that up with the offset spacing in there and we take the bottom one first kind of put it in at a slight angle like this make sure we push it all the way in and once we're sure that it's pretty level in there and it's seated all the way into the connector then we're just going to push it down all the way past these little clips and then same thing with the second one line up the connector slight angle Make sure it's fully seated, and then push it down past the clips. And that's done. All right, and before we close it back up, we're going to do a couple things. One, I brushed off and dusted off a little bit of the, the dust that was in there. If you want to, if you have a real dusty fan here, you can get a, a spray can of, of air and blow it in there and get some of that dust out. You want to do that either in your garage or outside somewhere because otherwise the, the dust is just going to settle back in your, your room or office somewhere. And uh, the last step we're going to do is reconnect this battery connector before we put the case back on. So snapped it back into place. And I'm going to set this case back on. And I'm not going to put the screws in yet. Just make sure it's fully seated on there and doesn't wiggle around. I'm just going to squeeze it with both hands, flip it over, and lay it straight down. Now I do that just in case if the, um, the memory wasn't fully seated correctly, once I boot it up then I'll know that and I can get back into it without having to take all 10 screws out again. So let's go ahead and get this thing booted up. Alright, so since we just put a brand new hard drive in there that has nothing on it, 
we need to obviously get the operating system loaded on there. We've got a couple of options for that. One is obviously you can completely clone your old drive to a new drive. The other option is to do an internet recovery and load Mac OS from the internet, which is what we're going to do. Or the other option is loading uh, from a USB drive, so creating a boot disk USB drive with Mac OS on it and then installing it over that. I've got videos on both of those uh, latter two options. I'll put links to both of them in the in the comments below. And you've got obviously the choice of using wireless internet to install this or we've got an ethernet jack on here. With these older laptops, this predates uh, AC version of, of wireless, so it's not gonna be quite as fast over the, over the Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna opt to plug this in and I'm gonna get it all the way up and installed and then I'll meet you back once we get back into the uh, Mac OS. So just as a side note, if you're gonna be using ethernet, you can either plug that in before you boot it up or you can plug it in right where the screen was looking for Wi-Fi and it automatically detects the internet and starts picking it up. All right, so going through the internet recovery is gonna bring you to this Mac OS utility screen. And like I said, I've got a couple of videos linked down below that step you through this step-by-step, -step. but we're just gonna go into the utility, disk utility real quick, just to make sure our new hard drive is showing up in there. And there it is. So there's the 500, 512 gigabyte SSD that we installed. So I'm going to get that ready to go, get uh, Mac OS all installed on there, and then come back later and uh, catch back up with you guys and talk about uh, steps two. All right, that always takes a good little while, but it's well worth it to install that fresh operating system on this brand new drive. And uh, next step we're going to do... Uh, off screen is enable trim. So I've also got a video that explains what trim is and how to activate it. Uh, anytime you install a new SSD, it's recommended that you go ahead and activate that on that new drive. So check out the description below and you will see a link to the video on how to do that. All right, next thing I'm going to do, I always go straight into the settings, go to trackpad, hit this tap to click because I can't stand clicking, so I'm going to be tapping. So let's go ahead and look at our About screen here and see what we ended up with. And here's a brand new Mac OS Catalina, which is the highest operating system that this particular 2012 takes, which I think is absolutely great. At the time of this recording, it's only two uh, versions of Mac OS behind. And uh, for a 10-year-old computer, I think that's completely fine. 16 gigs of 1600 megahertz DDR3 and our brand new Mac SSD 512 gigabytes so everything is good to go so like I said enable that trim and then let's talk about what happens next all right so I said that this was going to be a two-step uh, process on this particular laptop and so far step one I'm very happy with the uh, the new hard drive the new RAM makes this very peppy this is uh this 2012 is running pretty smooth let's let's even take a look at popping open safari and boom just like that let's just open up apple's web page i mean you can't ask for much much more responsive this than that now uh we're gonna talk about what's happening for step two and i'll be completely honest i've never done it before i'm not sure if it's gonna work and uh I've read conflicting things on the internet. Some people say that it works, some people say that it doesn't, but we're gonna give it a try. Now, stay tuned. At the very end of this episode, I will give you a hint as to what step two is, uh, but be, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, of course. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Be sure to check out those other links down below for any of the steps that I skipped in this video. Make sure you pick those up and, uh, and watch them. If you have any questions about any part of the process of upgrading one of these guys, go ahead and ask me in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, but be sure if, if this was a helpful guide for you, give me that thumbs up. And like I said, subscribe so you don't miss part two. And I promised you guys I would give you a hint as to what part two is. 
and it has something to do with that. So thanks as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.